suggest that folk came to church today not to celebrate a dead Jesus. Somebody came to church today because you got a living Savior. I mean, you planned out your good clothes today because you got a living Savior. Is there anybody who went to sleep last night and woke up this morning ready to make your way to the cathedral or the sanctuary to testify he's alive forever? exalt his name together. Is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord on today? Come on, won't you stand to your feet and celebrate the goodness of our Savior, the goodness of our Lord, for he is the light of the world who stepped down into darkness. He is continually opening our eyes so we can see. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this worship song together. We want you to join in with us and lift your voices unto our God. For he is truly worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy to be magnified. And we bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing this song together. We say light of the world. Light of the world. You step down. You step down into the Say open my eyes.
because you are all that we need and more. You are the sacrifice, God. And we thank you and we bless you.
please remain standing for our hymn today, Lead Me to Calvary. Anybody grateful for Calvary today? Hallelujah. God, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, saints, lift your voice. Let's sing it together.
you would remain standing for just a moment as we read our scripture lesson for today, Matthew 27, verses 50 through 56. I'm reading from the New International Version. Matthew 27, verses 50 through 56. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tomb after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and Mary the mother of Zebedee's sons. The word of God for the people of God. You may take a posture of prayer. I ask you to not just listen to me pray, but pray with me. Amen. Our great and holy God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We bless you this day for the privilege we have to call on you because you have made it possible all because of Jesus. We celebrate what has happened because we know that we are here because of the blood. Because of the blood that cleanses us, because of the blood that covers us. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for our sins. And we pray, oh God, that you will prepare us in our hearts and our minds to be more mindful, appreciative, humble, and grateful. Grateful because it was a high price. It was costly. Ah, God, thank you for what you did to redeem us and reclaim us, to restore us, to save us, to deliver us. God, we are grateful. We are here today because we want to show you, demonstrate to you, give you praise, honor, and glory, and we are the fruit of your seed. Ah, God, we are the fruit of the seed that was sown because lest it fall like a weed or kernel to the ground and dies, it cannot produce much fruit. But one Friday there was a seed sown and died so that there can be a harvest. We are but a few, but worldwide there are people declaring their praise and their honor and their gratitude for what you did at Calvary. On this what we call Good Friday. Horrific for our Savior, but oh, we're glad about the goodness that it gave to us. Horrific for our Savior, but we're grateful that he was bruised for our transgressions. My God, we are so grateful that he was chastised that he was whipped and that he was beaten and that he took it all for us. And so we acknowledge it today and we give you praise, God. We acknowledge it today with humble hearts, with grateful hearts. And we say, Lord God, help us to live like grateful people. Not only when we are in this worship space, but every day of our lives, reverencing you, honoring you, for the great things you have done. 
So Lord, stand in your preacher one more time. And I pray for the specific words, though he's studied, though he's prepared. God, you know the anointing he needs to declare your powerful word so that hearts will be pricked, minds will be changed, souls will be saved. And not just today, but we are wherever family and those who will view this days and weeks and months ahead. God, the power of your word, it goes forth and never returns to your void. It always accomplishes what you send it forth to do. Something more miraculous and powerful than we could ever imagine. So preach in this place and we will give you our undivided attention as we welcome you to do your work in here for your glory, God. And let Jesus be exalted. Let the name of Jesus resound and we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in that matchless and marvelous name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
Come on, help me celebrate Jesus all over the Lord's church. Help me celebrate Jesus all over the Lord's church. Help me celebrate Jesus all over the Lord's church. Let everything that have breath <laughs> Let everything that had breath praise the name of Jesus on Good Friday afternoon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus on Good Friday afternoon. Hallelujah. Come on, thank God for Jesus on Good Friday afternoon. Help me celebrate Jesus on Good Friday afternoon. <laughs> if you love Jesus, show some sign on Good Friday afternoon. <laughs> come on, come on, don't get tired. It's, it's Good Friday, Good Friday, Good Friday. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 What a wonderful Savior we have. I said, what a wonderful Savior we have. What a glorious Savior we have. What an amazing Savior we have. There's nobody like Jesus. Somebody ought to be glad about him today. <laughs> oh, how we bless the name of Jesus. It makes no sense to say that name 452 times if you're not going to celebrate him the way he needs to be re rejoiced about and celebrated. We thank God for Jesus on this Good Friday afternoon and what a joy it is to be in the church house simply to rejoice that one Friday on a hill called Calvary. That man named Jesus took our place and died so that we might live and we honor the Lord today for Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. God bless you. Anybody glad to be in church this afternoon? I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad to be here with you. Glad we've all come together under the banner of the Lord Jesus Christ to recognize, to remember that Jesus Christ took the penalty of our sin so that we might have everlasting life. The Christian church are never tired of hearing the words, he died. The Christian church are never get tired of remembering the sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who became <laughs> The propitiation for our sin. It's one of my favorite church words. The propitiation for our sin. The all-sufficient sacrifice. The one who was slain once and for all. Today, that's our sole purpose for gathering. To celebrate the sacrifice of Jesus. And I'm glad to see each of you who has come today there congregations from across our city who are represented in this cathedral this afternoon and I'm grateful for each one of you who has come we will not take the time to designate congregations from which church you came which church another has come we're just all together as the body of believers in Jesus Christ to celebrate the crucified lamb we are delighted however that our primary sister congregation who joins with us today, the Lily Grove Church, has come once again this year to be with us. Amen. God bless you. Their pastor is here again to preach the word of God unto us, and we're excited that Pastor Terry Keith Anderson has returned to share the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you, man. Glad that you're back in this house. These preachers and leaders and Servants of the Lord's Church called Lily Grove have come. This choir has already begun to bless us, and we're going to release them even the more to minister to us in just a few moments. But may I please celebrate the pastor of Houston, Texas, who is in this place today, the right Reverend Dr. William Alexander Lawson. Will you help me celebrate him? 
He's here, our founding pastor emeritus. And we're excited about his presence today. Hallelujah. It's so good to see you, sir. We thank God for you. And help me thank God for his entire family that has joined him today. His three daughters, his two granddaughters, his son-in-law, and his two great-grandchildren. Praise God for all of them in the church house this afternoon. Praise the Lord. And we thank God for Ms. Vendetta, who is his primary caregiver. We thank God for the work that she does and all those who serve along with that team of individuals who never leave his side. He's got bodyguards at all times. And we thank God for him and for them and for the work that they do. Anybody glad to be in church? I think I asked that. Anybody glad? Okay. All right. All right. Look towards somebody and say, I'm glad to be in worship with you. I'm glad to be in worship with you. If they didn't put a smile on their face, turn back to the same person and say, did you hear what I said? I said, I'm glad to be in worship with you. Don't ignore me. It's Good Friday. Don't ignore me. It's Good Friday. Don't act like you didn't hear me. You heard what that man said. It's Good Friday. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Well, he didn't have to let me. No, he didn't have to. But I'm glad to be in the service. Everybody got to Oh, yes, I'm glad. Hallelujah. I'm glad. Oh, yes, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Yes, I am. No, he didn't. No, no, he didn't. But I'm glad. Can we sing it again? Oh, yes, I'm glad. Oh, yes, I'm glad. Hallelujah, glad. To be service one more time. One more time. No, he didn't. No, no, he didn't. But I'm glad. To be in the service. Come on, tell us. to be in church and we praise God for the privilege we don't take this week lightly this is a significant week for the body of Christ and we thank God that we've come to this Friday experience and it's time to give unto the Lord it's offering time in the Lord's church and we're excited about giving amen 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 it's time to give to the Lord's work and we're excited that each of us who has the opportunity to give has come to this place to offer to the Lord that which will allow us to continue to do the work of ministry here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and continue to lift up the cause of Christ every time we have an opportunity in every, in every way that we possibly can. Ushers are moving about us now. If you need an envelope, they'll be delighted to pass one to you and they will ensure that you're able to put that tangible paper gift into that envelope or you can use the digital platforms that are available to us. You'll see them scrolling on the screen. There are multiple ways by which we can give to the Lord's Church and we invite you to do so on this Friday afternoon as we 
worship the Lord. David declares, I will not come before the Lord with that which costs me nothing. So we come giving to the Lord, knowing that the Lord has given everything to us. And so we honor the Lord with our gifts, with the first fruit of our increase, with our offerings, to speak to our level of appreciation and adulation to God for the goodness that God has displayed in each one of our lives. As we give this afternoon, we ask that you will think very carefully and critically about how much you appreciate the gift of salvation. And although we not, will not tell you what to give, may your gift be commensurate with how much you appreciate what the Lord Jesus gave on Good Friday afternoon. So it's not just a normal gift. This is a gift that says, Lord, I thank you that on that Friday you died, took my place at Calvary. And so as we commit our gifts unto the Lord this afternoon, I want to consecrate them in prayer. So as the people of God, won't you bow with me? And let us pray. Gracious God, how we honor you and praise you for your goodness and your grace. We love you and thank you for the wonderful ways by which you continue to bless each one of us. You continue to give to each one of us. Morning by morning, new mercies we see and we thank you that you've awakened us today to brand new mercies. Throughout this day, even to this very hour, you've loaded us with benefits. Goodness and mercy have followed us all the days of our lives. Your grace is still sufficient for us. Thank you for joy and for peace, for contentment, for satisfaction in the Holy Ghost. Thank you for all of the intangible ways by which you bless us each and every day of our lives. And then for all the tangible things that we cannot recount or recall, we thank you so much that every single day you bless us in incalculable ways. And may we forever be found faithful to bless you back because you keep on doing great things for us. We can now receive the gifts that you first placed into our hands as we put them back into your hands so that the kingdom of God might be advanced through Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We thank you for all of these sister congregations who joined together under the banner of Jesus Christ. And we thank you that as we celebrate you this afternoon, we can remember that you took our place at Calvary. And we can honor you afresh and anew every single day of our lives that you took the time to die for each and every one of us so that we might live and have life everlasting. We honor you for that today. And although we can never repay you, we pray that you'll receive these gifts as, as tokens, as symbols of glad and generous individuals who commit ourselves to you and to your work, to the kingdom advancement. And we pray that no one will lack as a consequence of what they give today. You'll give back to your sons and daughters as you see fit so that we will always have the testimony that we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. We thank you for victory in our finances and we'll say it until we see it in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It's good to be in church. This music ministry is going to bless us and after they will have blessed us with two selections, we shall hear the word of God proclaimed to us by the right reverend Terry Keith Anderson, the inimitable and eminent pastor of the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church of Houston, Texas. His fame is spread abroad because he preaches the word of God with power and authority. And today he's going to do just that. Receive him with joy as he shall preach to us on this Good Friday afternoon. Music ministry, bless us. And then Pastor Anderson shall do the same.
clergy and to our Pope and Bishop Dr. Lawson all of you my brothers and sisters in the Lord growing up in my little church in Louisiana where I was born they used to sing is another day's journey and I'm glad about it glad to be here in this magnificent sanctuary. Thank you, Pastor, for inviting us to come from down the street to share in this another Good Friday service. I'm grateful to the Lord for all of the good people of Lily Grove who have come and for all of my other brothers and sisters who are here. Whenever I go to work in another man's garden, I like to bring my own tools. So I'm grateful for Lily Grove's presence here today. I was watching these lights strobing and going on. I, I just felt like getting a drink, you know what I mean? I, I just want to... Is this a church or is this a... What are you doing over here, Reverend? If you're a Christian, open your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Matthew at chapter 27. Matthew at chapter number 27. Verses 50 through verse 53. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. I want to talk a minute about silent witnesses to the crucifixion. Thank you, you may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Silent witnesses to the crucifixion. Some several years ago, Pastor Cosby and myself and several other preachers and pastors 
were inducted into the Martin Luther King Jr. Board of Preachers on the campus of Morehouse College. At that induction service of the several of us who were inducted into the Board of Preachers, Reverend Samuel Kyles was the induction speaker. Reverend Kyles, you may remember, was one of the last people to have talked with Dr. Martin Luther King on April 4th, 1968. Dr. Kyles and Ralph Abernathy were the last two people to speak with Dr. King. And Pastor Kyles of the Monumental Baptist Church of Memphis, who had invited Dr. King to come to Memphis for the sanitation workers' strike, had gone to the Lorraine Motel to pick Dr. King up along with his guests to bring them to dinner at his house. Dr. King, of course, was standing on the balcony and he spoke to the Reverend Jesse Jackson to go and put on a necktie. And there was the musician of the Monumental Church in the car and Dr. King mentioned to him that before he spoke, he wanted him to pray Precious Lord. And before he could get those words out, the shot rang out. And Samuel Kyles was taking Dr. King to his house. And he was the last living person who was on the balcony with Dr. King the moment he was assassinated. And at the induction of Pastor Cosby, myself, and others in the Martin Luther King Board of Preachers, Samuel Kyle raised the question, why was it? that God let him live so long after the death of Martin Luther King Jr. And he said to us, and we shouted all in our shoes, Dr. Kyle said, the Lord revealed to him that he lived long enough because crucifixions ought to have a witness. Every crucifixion or to have a witness. Come with me to a skull-shaped hill and a blood-soaked cross on the outskirts of the city of Jerusalem on this Good Friday and let us hear the testimony of some silent witnesses. The women are there, but we do not want to hear from them because presumably in that day, the testimony of women was inadmissible in a court of law. Simon of Cyrene, who helped Jesus to bear his cross, is present. But because of the color of his skin, he is not even allowed in the courtroom, let alone given opportunity to give his testimony. The chief priests, scribes, and elders are currently on the scene, but they portend a wicked government in collusion with a blasphemous religion turned against the fairest of 10,000 angels. So their testimony would be highly prejudicial. The mother of Jesus, along with the beloved disciple John, are nearby, but the substitute on the cross has made John a substitute on the ground in surrogacy for the care of his mother. And the horror of their stupendous grief has rendered them incapable of speech. But before I delve into a homiletical unfolding 
and an exegetical presentation of God speaking in a language of his own. Verse 50 says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, let us not rush past the loudness of the cry at the time of his death, which indicates that Jesus is not fading away but he is dying while in possession of his own faculties. He voluntarily relinquishes his life and he decided when he would die. Neither the Romans nor the Jewish leaders were in control of this event. It is clear that the Father and the Son are in control of Calvary because Calvary is the culmination of God's redemptive activity from the Old Testament to April 7th, 2023. The following events are narrated sequentially in the text, but they occurred simultaneously the moment Jesus bowed his head in death. The supernatural events of great significance are the silent witnesses that I want to hear from at crucifixion. The first witness I want to call to the stand is the sun darkened at high noon. An unearthly, preternatural darkness suddenly descended to wrap the whole land in a midday midnight for three hours. No human eyes were allowed to gaze on the Lord's last hours. Jesus entered into a thick darkness of body soul and spirit in a mysterious suffering that defies description so dreadful that we can know nothing about it. But a mystery is not that about which we cannot know anything. A mystery is that about which we cannot know everything. I believe that in that darkness, he tasted the ultimate horror of a soul that is lost. In that darkness, he tasted the bitterness of what it means to be abandoned by God. In that mysterious loneliness, he who knew no sin was made sin for us and experienced the torment of a soul in hell. In the impenetrable, imponderable, complete darkness, Jesus became our scapegoat. There were two goats brought on the Day of Atonement. One was sprinkled with blood and on the other goat was the confession of the sins of the people. And a fit man took this goat out to the wilderness and turned him loose in absolute desolation. And as far as he ran away, that's as far as their sin was taken away. Jesus took our sins as our scapegoat and suffered a loneliness, a deprivation, a darkness that mankind could never understand. The darkness veiled the anguish of the Son of God while he was bearing the punishment for our sins. At the same time, the darkness cried out against the blackness 
of our sin and testified to the tremendous cost of our redemption to a holy and loving God. The testimony of the silent witness of the sun darkened in the middle of the day was that the S-U-N and the S-O-N could not shine at the same time. But the second witness I want to call to the stand is the torn curtain. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all report the tearing of the veil. But Matthew and Mark add that it was torn in two from the top to the bottom suggesting that this was something God did and that veil, that event, that curtain was heavy with spiritual significance. Brothers and sisters, the curtain was an elaborate woven fabric of 72 twisted plaits of 24 threads each 60 feet high and 30 feet wide and as thick as a man's hand at his palm. The veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place pointed to the enormous gulf between a holy God and a sinful people. The veil said symbolically and unmistakably, come this far and no farther. The rending of the veil signified that the new and living way is now open for all people to enter into the presence of God through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. When this curtain was rent, God proclaimed that the daily ministrations of the Jewish high priest had come to an end because now the divine great high priest Jesus Christ had come and entered into the holy of holies in heaven with his own atoning blood. It is now a bisected curtain that no longer function to keep what lay on the other side of it secret from all those on the outside. By the death, death of Jesus, the way into the Holy of Holies was open. The tearing of the veil testifies that Jesus sacrificed on the cross has fulfilled the hopes expressed in Israel's years of temple sacrifices. Jesus is now the great high priest whose sacrifice is the permanent satisfaction of God's wrath on sinful humanity. What can wash? away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now everything the Old Testament sacrifices point to was fulfilled in his sacrificial death. Jesus' offering of himself was the perfect and final sacrifice so nothing more needs to be done or can be done to reconcile sinful men and women to a holy God. Everything needed for salvation was accomplished in Jesus' death on the cross. We would startle God. We would shock God. We would befuddle God if we asked God to do something else. 
everything that needs to be done is done. Salvation is not about what you do. It's about what has already been done. Access. Access to God will no longer be through the old discredited cultic system, but through, but through Jesus Christ himself. And more specifically, through his death as a ransom for many. Brothers and sisters, we don't have a right to the tree of life. But because he died, we have access. Um, when my daughter was, was four or five years old, she had a little group of girls that would be with her all the time. And they would come to my, to my study on Sunday morning. And all of them, all five of them had their little pocketbooks with them. And uh, my daughter would come and rush in and go to the candy jar that I kept on my desk. And her four little gangster partners <laughs> wanted some candy, but they were scared of me. So they would stand at the door and Victoria would come in and get all the candy she wanted. And I could tell by their faces that they wanted some candy but they were scared of me. So they would stand at the door with their little pocketbooks in their hand. And one Sunday, Victoria said, y'all come get all the candy you want. This is my daddy's office. They were scared of me, but they knew her. And because of their friendship with her, they had access to me. One Friday, hey, on a hill called Calvary, I owed a debt I couldn't pay. So he paid a debt he didn't know. Jesus paid it all. And a good definition for all is all. I have access to God the Father because I know his son, Jesus Christ. The testimony, the testimony of the torn curtain is there is no longer any need for a mediator to go behind the veil once a year with bells on his tassels and a rope around his waist to drag him out just in case he died behind the curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the Most Holy. Because Jesus died, we have a mediator, the man Jesus Christ, and through him every man can go to God for himself. But I call another witness to the stand. I want to call the earthquake. We've already listened to the sun darken. We've listened to the rent veil. Let's hear now from the earthquake. These silent witnesses of God speaking in his own language. The earthquake at Calvary parallels the earthquake at Mount Sinai and reminds us that although the law was given through Moses, grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. At the quaking of the earth, the rocks were rent, denoting the presence an intervention of God among men and showing his might and greatness as the God of the covenant. But brothers and sisters, most incredible to the critically minded in here today, when the rocks split, tombs were open 
and saints arose and appeared to people in Jerusalem. It is the death of Jesus that triggers the resurrection of the life of saints. Just as the rending of the curtain makes it clear that the way to God is open for all, it is clear now that the raising of the saints shows that death through Jesus has been overcome. The raising of these saints is a foretaste of the resurrection to which all believers can look forward in hope. Through the death of Jesus, a new day has arrived. A day when death has been defeated by death. And resurrection to eternal life is possible because Jesus died. The testimony of the earthquake is that the resurrection of those believers was a foretaste and a pledge of the final resurrection of all who believe on Jesus Christ. But today, this Friday, that is so significant in the life of the church that we do not even call it bad Friday. It's Good Friday. And on Good Friday, as I hurry to the close, we do not need the sun darkened to be a witness. We don't need the veil rent from top to bottom to be a witness. Nor do we need rocks to split open and graves to vomit up their dead in order for God to have a witness. These witnesses were silent witnesses. The sun dark, the veil rent, rocks split, graves open. Although they said no words, they spoke their testimony. Sun darkened, veil rent, rocks split, Graves open, no words, silent witnesses. Sun darken, veil rent, rocks split, graves open, dead in Christ, walk the streets of Jerusalem in silent protest to the killing of the Son of God. But today, Good Friday, we don't even call it Bad Friday. We don't need the sun darken. We don't need the veil rent. We don't need rocks split. We don't need graves open. There ought to be some live witnesses. Thank God the sun was dark. Thank God the rocks split. Thank God the graves opened. That's something you can see. But God needs to hear something. I don't need the sun darken. I don't need the veil rent. I don't need rocks split. I don't need graves open. I need some living witnesses who's got some living testimony of what God has done in your life. If God has done something in your life, you don't need the sun darken. 
You don't need the veil rent. You don't need rocks split. You don't need graves open. Just think about where he's brought you from. Think about how many doors he's opened. Think about how many ways he's made. When you think about his goodness, when you think about his mercy, when you think about his grace, you don't need rocks split. You don't need the sun darkened. You don't need graves open. When you think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. I wish I had a witness here. You remember some years ago, as I go to my seat some years ago, there was a shooting at a school in Parkland, Florida. Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School. There was a shooting at that high school. And that year, I was at the, the National Action Network Convention in New York City, and Reverend Sharpton invited one of the students who was in the building when the shooting started. She says she heard shots all over the hall, and she closed the door and got underneath a desk. And then the shooter came in the classroom where she was shot some people in the classroom where she was. He walked out of that classroom and went shooting down the hall. And then she says she heard him come back to the room where she was. The little girl said she had the presence of mind to take some blood that was on one of the dead students and smear the blood all over her body. And when the shooter came back in the classroom, he walked right over her because she was covered by the blood. One father on a hill called Calvary. He died, didn't he die? He shed his blood for your sins and mine. And last night while you slept, last night in your house, last night while you were in bed, the death angel flew over Houston. You could have been dead, sleeping in your grave, but you were covered by his blood. Anybody here know you're covered by the blood? There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lula, their guilty stain. Is there a witness here? He will open doors he will make a way he will save your soul he will pick you up he will turn you around i wish i had somebody who knows who i'm talking about you don't mind if i talk about him do you you don't mind if i'm a witness for myself you don't mind if I tell my testimony. I was almost dead at MD Anderson Hospital. The doctor said he has only two hours and he's going to be dead. But here I am in Wheeler Avenue talking about can't nobody do me like Jesus. And then the doctor said, if he lives, you're going to have to put him in a nursing home. He'll be a vegetable the rest of his life. Here I am, clothed and in my right mind. Can't nobody. Can't nobody.
do me like Jesus. Y'all know him, don't you? He's Adam's redeemer, Abel's vindicator. He's Abraham's sacrifice. He's Noah's ark. He's Moses' bush on fire. Y'all know him, don't you? He's a rock in a weary land, a shelter in a time of storm. He's a friend when you're friendless, bread when you're hungry, water when you're thirsty. Y'all know him, don't you? He's God's only son, Mary's baby boy, James and Jude's older brother, distinctive in supernatural capacity, superlative in sovereign majesty, exclusive in spiritual beauty, radiant in eternal splendor, matchless in supernal deity. He's the God of gods, the prince of princes, the Pharis of 10,000. He died, didn't he die? But bright early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. If he got up in you, why don't you grab somebody? Why don't you tell somebody? You don't know like I know. You can't tell it like I can tell it. What the Lord, what the Lord, I know he's all right. He talks with me, he tells me I am his own, and the joy, 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 do you have joy, resurrection joy, good Friday joy, joy, I know he's all was a young girl who had a rare blood disease. A young girl had a rare blood disease. Her brother, who was two years older than her, recovered from the same blood disease. Both of them had a rare blood type. The young girl was dying, and the only thing that could save her was a transfusion from somebody who had already had the disease. They brought them to the hospital. Both of them had the same blood type. The older brother was going to give her a blood transfusion, but he was afraid to give her his blood. When they got to the hospital, the doctor said, are you ready to give your sister the transfusion? With tears in his eyes, his bottom lip quivering, he said, I'm scared, but that's my sister. They put both of them on the table, put the needle in both of their arms, and when the brother saw the blood come out of his arm to go into his sister's arms, tears came in his eyes again. He looked at the doctor and said, Doctor, when am I going to die? The doctor finally realized that the little boy thought to give his sister his blood meant he had to die. He was scared to give her his blood because he thought his blood leaving him 
to give her life would take his life. That didn't happen to the little boy. But let me tell you about somebody else who gave his blood on the cross and it was transfused in the my arm. He died so that I might live. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. It will never, 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 never. Why don't you look at somebody? Tell them it reaches to the highest mountain. Come on, use your preaching voice. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, it will never witnesses of the crucifixion but I also thank God for these witnesses all over this church who make a joyful noise unto the Lord I remember that day Pastor Anderson when you and I flew down to Atlanta in 2007 we were inducted into that board of preachers and we heard Pastor Billy Kyles tell us about the crucifixion needing witnesses. Those words were just as strong that day as they are this day, strong this day as they were that day. And I'm grateful to be surrounded on this Friday afternoon with some witnesses who are grateful that the death of the Lord Jesus Christ has given you life has given you life, that the blood of Jesus Christ transfused into us 
which covers us will never lose its power. Hallelujah. I want us to sing that. Get ready for that. I want us to sing that today. And as we prepare to sing it, somebody in this Lord's Church may be in need of a Savior. <laughs> what a wonderful day to be saved. Somebody in this church today may need to be redeemed. What a wonderful day to be redeemed. Somebody today may need to become one of the witnesses to the crucifixion of Jesus, recognizing that because of his death, you have life everlasting. What a wonderful day. Don't wait till Sunday. Today's a great day to be saved. On Good Friday. On Good Friday. Here on this Good Friday afternoon, and you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I need to know him as my personal Savior. I want to have a relationship with him, intimate fellowship with him. Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Today I invite you, sister, I invite you, brother, to accept the great salvation found in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Our leaders are going to come stand with me now, and as they stand with me, they literally extend from this pulpit into each pew around the church house, open arms and say, you are welcome here. If you're unsaved, you are welcome here. But if you're unchurched, there are leaders from the Wheeler Avenue Church, leaders from the Lily Grove Church. We'd love to receive you as members of our congregations. We have our arms open to you saying, you're welcome here. You're welcome at either of these congregations. And there are other churches that are represented here. We're not necessarily overwhelmingly interested in which church. We just want you in a church where you can grow and become everything the Lord has destined you to become. We want you to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you're here on this Friday afternoon, you say, Pastor, I'm unsaved. I'm unchurched. I want you to come toward me right now. Pastor, I'm unsure. I don't, I don't really know. I need you to explain it to me. Come on down here. We've got folk who will explain it to you, help you to know exactly what salvation through Jesus Christ really means. If you're here on this good Friday afternoon, you say, Pastor, that, that's me. I need to be down there with you. I see these arms extended toward me. I need to walk in the direction of these brothers and sisters who have their arms extended toward me. Sister, brother, balcony, first floor, wings, wherever you are, come toward us even right now. We're going to sing about that blood about which Pastor Anderson has just preached. And while we're singing, that's a good, ex 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 that's a good moment in time for you to start walking toward us. And we will testify to the reality that the blood will never lose its power. If you know that on this Friday afternoon, church family, I want you to sing with me from the beginning of this song all the way to the end. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Let's sing together. Anyone who needs to come, needs to come on now. Come on now. Come on. Come on. That Jesus shed for me. Who needs to come? Sister, are you saved? Brother, are you saved? Way back, way back on Calvary. Way back on Here she comes. Somebody ought to be celebrating that my sister's moving even on this Friday afternoon. The blood that gives me strength. Come on, even now. From day to day. 
because it reaches to the highest mountain. Let the church sing. It reaches to the highest mountain. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And it flows to the lowest valley. Sing, beloved. It says the Bible says that the heaven, angels in heaven rejoice when one comes to repentance our sister has come and we rejoice with the angels on this Friday afternoon at the body of Christ the church of the Lord just got expanded to include you my dear sister on behalf of all of us who stand and sit in this place today I want you to know that we're so excited about the decision you just made to become a part of these Brothers and sisters who call themselves family in the Lord's church, on behalf of all of us, I say to you that you're welcome here. We can't wait to see how God is going to use you uh, to use the gifts that God has given to you to make our church a better church. And we're going to use the gifts that God has already invested in us to make your life a better life. On behalf of all of us, beginning with that distinguished gentleman behind you, our founding pastor, and all, she said, I'm sorry, I'm standing in front of you, I'm sorry, no problem. And all of us here, welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We're glad you're here. Come on, church, celebrate, my dear sister. Follow Deacon Blunt, will you please? Follow him, and he's going to share some information with you along with Deaconess Blunt, to God be the glory for the wonderful things that God has done for us in worship today. Amen, amen, amen. I was sharing with our ministers in training earlier this week, and I shared with them a, a quote that I heard earlier uh, this month, or maybe late last month. It's, Einstein says that creativity is intelligence having fun. That creativity is intelligence having fun. That's what Einstein said. You want to know what we just experienced through the preaching of Pastor Terry Keith Anderson? That was intelligence having fun. He just had a good time talking about Jesus. And I thank God for the way that he preached to us this afternoon. He told us about the silent witnesses of the crucifixion. But then he challenged us to be vocal witnesses to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> Anybody redeemed in this church? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir, for preaching with such clarity, with such power, with such authority as you always do. I praise God 
for the preaching of Pastor Terry Keith Anderson for the fellowship of the sister churches known as Wheeler Avenue and Lily Grove and all the sister congregations who gather with us. They're pastors who are here. Pastor Anderson, I'm going to ask that you along with our clergy will meet us at the table. I see Pastor Stroman from down the street. Pastor, come on and share with us here at the table. All pastors, we will not have the, the responsibility to serve, but if you're here, I invite you to share at the table. This is the place of communion. Where with fellowship, with unity, we gather together to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. We come to this table to remember that yes, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we're healed. All across this church are folk who understand the significance of this day. And you remember that on the last night of the Lord's life, that Thursday evening, last night to be sure, the Lord instituted this meal with his disciples. He took them into a large upper room that was furnished for the purpose of the Passover. And while they had the privilege of eating together, fellowshipping with one another, after they had dined, he took two elements from that table bread unleavened bread and wine the fruit of the vine and he he told them that those two elements of that meal were now going to have a new representation a new significance the bread would now represent his broken body the wine would be the new covenant representing his shed blood they didn't understand all of that on that thursday evening but on this Good Friday afternoon, aren't we glad that we understand a little bit more the significance of what Jesus did when he instituted that meal with his disciples, the Lord's Supper that all Christians across this country and around the world commemorate one with another with regularity. Most of you, if not all of you, received these elements as you were coming into the Lord's Church this afternoon. Well, this morning, if you've not yet received them immediately following our consecration prayer, our chairman is going to pray a prayer. And after he has prayed that prayer, we'll ask that you'll just slip up your hands and our deacons will serve you in just a moment, just in case you did not receive the elements as you came into the Lord's church this afternoon. Jesus blessed those elements, so says the scriptures. And so too shall we bless these, consecrating them for our use as Chairman Hicks now leads us in prayer. Let us pray. Our God, our Father in heaven, God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this good Friday. Father God, we recognize it as a good Friday because we, your witnesses, can look back on that faithful day that day that started out as though death had victory. But, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, death, where is thy victory? For the victory we have is in Jesus. For his death saved us from death. And so, God, we thank you for the death of Jesus. We thank you for his sacrifice, for dying for our sake. For he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Lord, we thank you for the bread that is here representing his broken body that was bruised, battered, and beaten for our sake. The chastisement was upon him. So God, we thank you also for this wine that represents the shed blood. For without the shedding of blood, there'd be no remission of sin. So God, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for these elements that represent your great sacrifice. And we ask, as Jesus, that you would bless these elements for our use in remembering his death. And Lord God, bless us for your service as we go forth from this place, looking forward to the resurrection of Christ on Sunday morning. God be with us and keep us as always. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving and great expectation. Amen. 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 If you've not received the elements, won't you just slip up your hand? We'll serve you even now. As we sing together, there is a fountain filled with blood.
drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Keep your hands up until you're served. Our leaders will come to you with dispatch. And let's sing together, church. There is a fountain filled with blood. Lead us, Lily Grove. your voices, church. symbol of the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was wounded for our transgressions, the one who was bruised for our iniquity. We've heard it repeated over and over again in worship today, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I'm grateful that on this, not bad Friday, on this good Friday, we can remember 
the Lord Jesus gave his body to be beaten, battered, bruised, and broken for you and for me. He told us to remember that sacrifice. So as we eat of the bread, we remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. And we do so together as we eat the bread. Let us eat together. We hold in our hands a symbol of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Didn't you hear, Pastor, when he asked the question, what can wash away my sin? The answer comes with, with expedition, nothing but the blood of Jesus. As we hold this cup in our hand, we remember that Jesus Christ shed his blood. Now his blood both covers and cleanses all of our sin. It washes our sin away. Today on this Good Friday, we thank God that the blood still works and it will never lose its power. And as we drink together, we do so in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ who shed his blood that we might live. Let's drink together. Gracious God, we give you thanks today for the sufficient sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We give you thanks today he has taken all of our sins away. We give you thanks today that we as the believers, despite our denominational differences, despite our doctrinal practices as believers, we can come to the table and remember that Jesus Christ died to save us from our sins. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for loving us enough Prove that love at Calvary. Thank you for demonstrating, commending your love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So as we leave from this place today, having worshiped you for your goodness and worshiped you for your godness, we leave this place satisfied. We are saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we leave to be living testimonies, living witnesses for God who has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Thank you for the fellowship of the saints in this room today. Thank you for those all around the world who shared in worship with us today. Thank you for your word that still has power to transform us and to make us better than we would have been had we never heard it. Thank you for your preacher man today. Thank you for using him to rightly divide the word of truth and to creatively share with us how each of us must be a testimony, a witness to the death of the Lord Jesus Christ every day of our lives. Be with us now as we leave from this place. It's going to be a grand weekend, but we thank you that even before we get to Sunday, we can thank you that Good Friday has come and that Jesus Christ has died to save us from our sin. So it's in the name of Jesus Christ and we pray this prayer with great thanksgiving and great expectation for what's going to happen on Sunday morning as we exclaim to the world that we serve a risen Savior and we thank you that he lives forevermore. And so it's in the name of the Lord Jesus that we pray this prayer and give you great praise because you're a great God and let all the grateful people shout hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, church family. The Bible says that they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. Lily Grove is going to lead us in singing. Our ushers are going to lead us forth from the Lord's church. Go in peace and may the peace of God be yours. Have a fabulous weekend. Make sure you get to church on Sunday and celebrate our risen Savior. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you is my prayer.